meeting has been called to order. Uh, we what we mistakenly had paused the uh, online portion of the virtual portion of it, but we did see the pledge. Yep. Uh, no comments from the public. And why don't we uh, just round table a little bit uh, comments from the selectmen. Um, let's turn it over to you guys. Either of you want to? Well, so we had the, the, the vote yesterday with a, a fair turnout of almost 800 people. So it gave us information that I think we were seeking. I think that was probably important. Having the budget season, right? We're em embarking upon that now. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll look forward to seeing and hearing how people want to present their requests. We are on the year. The meeting Saturday. So, yep. Uh, so, Carl, on the so on the referendum that passed yesterday. So, in terms of implementation, I think when we last talked about it, we're pretty much ready to sign and. Start to move they forward. Got or? me a contract. Yes. Yeah, made a contract. Uh, no, I I uh, emailed Kirk, uh, my contact at Perk today. Okay. And told him uh, that in fact a referendum did pass, and that uh, I'll be looking to engage them with the contract. So they're working on that right okay. now. We'll get the contract. I usually have um, Kerma review it. Mm -hmm. Depends how in and in depth it is. Um, it, so I'll have Kerma review it, but um, if it's um, a contract that has substance that I feel needs to be addressed by our council, I'll have in it uh, maybe um, Bertram Moses look at it too. Okay. And, and then uh, once we sign a contract, uh, I will talk to the chief, um, uh, engage the police commission because I think they're gonna have a role in this too. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, I assume there will be some background information that Perf wants. Uh, maybe that will come from Janet mm -hmm. uh, as to contact information for current police officers, former police officers. Uh, uh, they may want some information from the chief and from the cat. I, I am not sure. Mm -hmm. okay. they, so they may want some uh, information first uh, and then do the work. No. Okay. Yeah, but we, I mean, okay, that's, I think, all all the information that we have and people would want to know for this time, so that's that's good for me. Yeah, yeah. so um, that, but I was going to address that, but that would be the process. I, you know, get a contract, uh, see what information they need before they even come up here, right? Yeah. Um, Do we think that we're going to have, I'm just looking at the timeline, do we think we're going to have information for this current budgeting process or because that's going to be tight and it's really impacting the the, the it, union agreement going into the next year anyway. yeah so we so have time we, we, to, we do so um i i think we have time okay so uh i I haven't studied what the chief put forward in front of the police commission, but I don't think he put in a budget request that was 10%. I think it's like a relatively standard operating procedure budget and the police commission passed it. Mm -hmm. So um, from a budgeting point of view, I don't think we're going to have a ton to talk about. Uh, as you know, um, the this, this scope of work uh, talked about benchmarking OPEP um, mm -hmm. and uh, also doing interviewing uh, with, with regard to traction and retention. Uh, so I'm not overly concerned with the actual budget season and getting the right number because of the studies. This is more of, I think, longer term and quite frankly, if there is something that we need to implement um, that is an, a post-employment benefit, whether it's pension or health, that can probably be done with a memorandum of agreement mm -hmm. after the budget. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, those types of things don't have, like if you increase 
the um the, the pension multiplier i don't think it's actually going to impact the amount we put aside for the budget year over year like two hundred thousand. i think it's going to be more like a different number like a five-figure number mm -hmm. in addition to that we got some news today that uh from becky sealman at milliman that the town contribution, because of the way the stock market, not even recently, but just over the last two years, they do evaluation. They do a valuation. Um, it looks like our contribution is more than sufficient. I'll just say that, which is good news, right? Uh, so even if the multiplier were to go up a little bit, we have the room for the first time that since I've been first elected, we have room on the pension contribution to adjust for that. So there's nothing that I think is going to come of this that is, um, I think, I'm going to be terribly ruinous in the short term or in the long term. I don't think um, that, uh, you know, one other um, item of interest uh, uh is my understanding is the police commission filled all the patrolman positions um, at their meeting last night. So okay. with, and when I say that, it's not with lateral hires, it's with new hires. So okay. they still need to undergo field training. So as the chief would say, they're not assets yet. But the good news is, and talking to the chairman today, that actually gets us up to 24, which is pretty remarkable. Um, an observation. Um, so my understanding, and I could be wrong, and maybe you guys have a better understanding of this, is when a police officer is going into the academy, they need a sponsor from a town. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming these candidates have multiple towns seeking that, right? I mean, there's a shortage of, we, we hear about the shortage. So if there's a shortage, then these candidates, you would think have an op opportunity to say, I wanna work for Old Saber. I wanna work for Clinton. I wanna work for, you know, Hartford, Middletown. And the good news is it appears that some of these candidates are choosing us, right? So that's good news. Um, and I'd like to hear that. And that's what I, I'm, you know, I, that is what the chairman told me today, that the patrol positions are filled. We have not backfilled or filled uh, Captain DePerry's position yet. So, um, I'd like to think that we're able to attract candidates. Mm -hmm. That's what that indicates to me. I'm happy for the chief, by the way. I really am. That, and I'm happy for the officers on our department because I, I told Ryan Walsh recently, every time I, every time I'm on the road and every time I see a police vehicle, I swear to God, it's Ryan Walsh. I feel like he's working 24 seven and I'm sure he's working extra hours. So. I'm hopeful that we can get these younger folks on the road and get them field trained and that they become assets of the department. That's kind of a long-winded answer, but that's some of the information I have as of six o'clock tonight. That's great. Thank you very much. So let me just make a note. So you um so yeah, and then um Okay. Um, you all set? Yeah. The, or the only other comment I'd make is I had a chance to attend the um, the Save Our Shade presentation oh, yes. last week. Yep. And uh, you know there was a good amount of people that attended from the public and across the different land use boards. And I think that the thing that was I think kind of just stood out to me in budget season is the the definitions of trees. You know, and looking at what you think of as trees doesn't necessarily mean towering oaks that we have to plant. They could be things as small as, you know, hydrangea 
trees, things that you think of as more ornamental, but still make a difference. And then also to, to become a, what was it? An Arbor Day town. One of, one of the pieces, the, the budgeting is as small as $2 per resident. $2 per what? $2 per resident. Oh. In terms of what you have set aside in your budget towards, towards trees, in terms of maintenance, I think we can you know, demonstrate that. Yeah, I mean that that is, you know, that seems like there's several other steps to become an Arbor Day town. Yeah. But you know, in you know, Carl, I, I acknowledged to everybody when I was there that said we've talked a lot about tree trimming over the years that I've been on board. You know, with the different things that are going on, um, and at the same time, we've also talked about the need for tree replacement and yeah. you know maintenance. So. You know, I don't know that people often see the replacements. I mean, right. I kind of just do it sometimes, you know. Um, you know, like on Cromwell Place, I planted two trees where we, the, the, there were these broken down trees. I don't know that anyone even noticed that. And in front of Grace Church, I did two trees because a tree came down. And I've already been in touch with the congregation, uh, the Historical Society, because they had yeah, the tree cut down. Yeah. Apparently, the state is going to come back and grind the stump. And I talked to Ed Armstrong. I said, Ed, I'd love to plant a tree next fall. Um, right. He's like, really? And I'm like, yeah. So just figure out a location, and we'll get it in the ground. And he's like, great. So, right. um, you know, I've offered it. So... Um, Along the road, it's not, and, and, and what you're saying is different than what I'm saying. Um, I do try to plant bigger trees, mm -hmm. typically. Um, and it's not always easy to find a recipient. People don't want them. Right. People don't want trees. <laughs> because they're messy sometimes. So I think maybe you might be saying more of what Kathy's saying in her memo to us, which is... Let's consider this all one thing. Vegetation management includes tree planting, tree pruning, uh, maybe cutting down on, on the amount of lawn. You got this from mm -hmm. Kathy? Yeah. 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 Cutting down on the amount of you know lawn areas. I told her I'm happy to meet with her and Bill Claffey and just kind of identify, are there lawns we shouldn't be mowing? Are there, is there an area, bad example of town park that we should let grow in, <laughs> you know, because it's never going to be used and why not let it just, why not plant something there? Mm -hmm. So i um, happy to meet with her on that. And um, she's just saying, kind of look at it holistically mm -hmm. as opposed to tree pruning, tree planting, invasives are over there. And yeah. I think that's what she's yeah. kind of saying. Yeah, being more comprehensive. Yeah. Yep. I'm fine with that, you know, it's not something, I mean, Kathy's always offering good ideas. <clears throat> um, so, a couple things. Uh, did you want to say anything? No, that's it. Thank you. Um, so, are they going to um, make a recommendation about an Arbor Day town? Or are they going to? I don't know if they're going to necessarily make a recommendation. You know, I said to, I said to everybody that the, the Save Our Shade group is not a nonprofit, but they are set up through the Middlesex Community Foundation. Oh. So they're their sponsor, so they can receive funds. They're in the process of doing some fundraising and Sustainable Connecticut uh, or Sustainable CT will do a matching grant. So they're trying to raise, I think sure. it was $4,000 right now. Sure. Um, and then do an event for um, planting. But you know they had these other things that they could make recommendations and they were talking to all the land use board members. And I said, you know, feel free to communicate this to the board of selectmen as well. Yeah. It's, she's it's the budget she's, side. She's emailed me. Yeah. And Carolyn Lyle has emailed me. Um, and they've attended a meeting somewhere yeah. along the way. A uh, couple things. Um, I had a couple people uh, send me the, and I, I know you guys saw it, uh, this proposed development in Westbrook that is just massive, massive, massive. Um, and I think really good for the area if it comes to fruition i see it as a positive uh what you're doing is you're putting people nearby 
uh, in ten in a dense densely uh, populated area, mm -hmm. um, which is what we want. We want more density. Uh, typically, little village there. Even though they say there'd be a lot of restaurants there, I believe that a lot of those folks would definitely be coming to Old Sabre and would support our community. I have no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. We would be supporting their community, they'd be supporting our community. So um, I wasn't really gonna talk about this, but I see it as a good thing. Um, you know, I was commenting as someone else, if this were to get developed, I can only imagine the taxes that something like this would throw off. And, you know, it would be, Westbrook would be in a very advantaged position, I would think, uh, assuming they don't, part of the deal could be cutting a tax break over the course of 10 years, could be something like that. It may or may not be, I don't know. But um, I would see this as a very good thing for the area. And I wonder, even though there is no affordable component to the housing, when you add that much supply, you wonder what effect it has on the market. And whether in fact that would help ease a little bit of the apartment housing issue in the area. It has to, it has to help. Even if they're not, um, just, just from older folks or younger families wanting to move in to that area or um, people who are downsizing here in town would go there. And mm -hmm. so it would definitely have an effect on the market. I'm not sure what that would be. I'm not an expert, so I shouldn't really talk too much about it, but pretty interesting and I'd love to see it happen. Obviously that's a, um, I went to um, William Sonoma shortly after the new year and boy, that, you know, it's not a good looking plaza right now. So it definitely needs that. Carl, quick question on that. Um, and you might not have this information at the moment. People, I had heard at one point that there had been talk of if there was going to be any sort of residential development there, the idea of connecting through to Old Saybrook yeah. or another point, at least closer down Route 1 towards Old Saybrook. Um, have it, I've heard probably exactly what you yeah. heard, which is they're talking about some sort of, um, I want to say auxiliary road. Yeah. But, yeah. Towards Spencer Plain or yes, something. Exactly. Okay. I, I know not much about that, but I have heard that. So uh, I was going to mention the referendum. Um, you know, when there's a budget referendum, it's the end of a process. This referendum is the beginning of a process. So a lot of work to be done. That's all. I'll leave it at that. Uh, just two other things I want to mention. Uh, I want to recognize David Brown's passing. Um, David Brown was a unique character in town, um, you know, lived in the Hay House, uh, had the stupa where still people go um, to have a peaceful moment or to honor their religion. Um, you know, David was uh, an important part of this community and um, we're very sorry to see his passing. Um, so, uh, You know, years ago, I was made aware, and um, Mike Cronin um, made me aware recently, and this is not for today's discussion, but the town does have an option mm -hmm. on that property. And um, if the town, in fact, uh, verifies that, if I verify that, and I pretty much have, um, it's definitely something the town would be willing, um, be interested in doing is exercising that option to acquire that property. Okay. And there's currently a conservation easement on it. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, anyway, uh, I just wanted to recognize David's passing. Um, he was a just a unique character, and I think we all had interactions with David. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the other thing I want to mention is um, Mike Cronin is. Um, uh, shutting, planning on shutting down his practice come April of this year. <clears throat> Mike, just so you guys know, I talked to Mike a little bit. Uh, he became town attorney 50 years ago. 
There was a 10 year period where he was not. And that was from like 1990 to 1999. Um, but, he, but even so, he continued to represent ZBA. So he has represented the Old Saybrook Zoning Board of Appeal for 50 years straight. Uh, Mike, you know, I, I, Mike was very clear to me that he wants nothing. He doesn't want any recognition, nothing like that. I am hard pressed not to do that. Um, uh, Mike, I think we can all agree, was a very fair minded individual. Mike, while a Republican, was um, never going to be a hack political tool and um, gave advice uh, that I think served both Democrats and Republicans in this town very well. Um, so it is definitely the end of an era um, <clears throat> in the town. And, and Mike uh, still to this day, and I talked to him about some matters, has terrific legal acumen and very good political acumen, always has. He's been an advisor to me for 20 years. Um, and I appreciate that. And I know that's more of a personal thing but we all need guidance sometimes, okay? And Mike was very good with the guidance. Um, but I think he served the town and uh, with his legal advice really well uh, for 50 years. Um, so I, you know, I just wanted to say that I asked him, can I say that? And he said, yes. And can I say it publicly and tell the board? And I just wanted to tell the board that. And I know Scott, you've known him forever too. Uh, Matt, I don't know what your interactions with Mike have been. Uh, just all through boards and commissions. Yeah. I mean, really limited in that way. But. So, anyway, just mentioning that, okay? Uh, all right. Approval of the minutes from January 9, 2024. I'll make a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any comments, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And then we'll do a uh, tax refund for EA and holdings. Um, I'll move that as our second. Second. Any questions on that? Comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And then item number B is just an encroachment permit bond release. People have to come in and give us $1,500 to do an encroachment permit uh, when Philly inspects it. They get it back. Um, so I'll move. Sometimes we don't even cash the check. We just take it. In. Uh, so I'll move approval. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. I'll move that we, uh, well, I don't know that you need to move, but um, I'll move that we go into executive session to discuss possible land acquisition. Second. There is second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So um, we are back in regular session. Uh, there was uh, simply a discussion in executive session. There were no votes and uh, no motions, nothing of that sort. Um, and there is, oh, there is one other item of business that Georgian pointed out to me that I'd like to add to the agenda. Um, You know what? Uh, I'm going to hold off on that. I know that David Sparrow to the Pension Benefits Board. Let me just make sure David wants to do this. Okay. Um, because I don't. I know Dave, and it's possible that he may not. Um, so, uh, so if there's no more business unless the board has anything else. No. Nope. Uh, we will. This was our first meeting at a new time. I hope it was more convenient for everybody. And uh, we will, I'll move to adjourn as our second. Second. All those in favor? All right, Aye. see you Saturday. Thank you, David.